Hey everybody, it's Steve with Sky194 and I appreciate you taking the time out of your day to come visit and check out my video. And today's going to be a little bit different, trying to do something a little bit different today and hopefully it'll work. I hope I can communicate at least most of what I'm trying to communicate. Um, we're here at Misano, of course, and I'm in the Aston Martin V8 and I, I, need, to, I need to, uh, update the setup for this car. It's, you know, the setup that I had is pretty old and everybody is a lot faster now, of course. Um, so basically, you know, the setup that I had was from when I did the pros and cons. And that, again, that's an older setup. And some of people have asked about, you know, how to do setups and things like that so i'm going to try to combine it and try to hopefully put something together here where y'all can get some tips and get some things plus get a setup you know for the aston martin and do all of that so i'm at least that's at least that's the goal anyway so starting out you know where do you start out at well where i start out and again this is kind of a disclaimer i just do it my, you know, this is the way I do it. I'm not saying it's the right way, the only way, the best way, anything. It's just the way I do it. So hopefully, you know, you can, again, you can pick up some tips from it and maybe, you know, some things you can pick up from other places, whatever, and just how you, how you like to do it. But again, this is just how I do it. Um, you know, at any of the, of course, all the tracks I've been at, of course, obviously with all these in ACC. And so it's easier that way because I know what I run, you know, what I've run at each track and what is decent as far as uh you know a um competitive time so here my best lap times a 133.80 and that's in the porsche um so that's my personal best now in the aston martin under that pros and cons i think the the best that i did was a lower 35 so that's pretty big difference um so before i did started this video i spent um a while getting the tires where I want just to make sure they're still at the right pressures where I want them to and of course I drive you know a little bit different on the track and that's just track knowledge than I did then you know a few little places but little here little there and I mean that's what makes the difference and I got down to a 3495 I think it was and of course at that time I didn't have as much fuel load now I carry 80 liters where then I only carried like 60 so again, that all makes a little bit of differences. But I even went faster than I did doing nothing to the setup. All I did was just driving. Um, so again, then you know, the more you practice, the more you can fine tune your your you know your going around the track as far as the lines that you make going around the track and your brake markers and all those kinds of things. The more you can fine tune it a little here and a little there, you're gonna drop some. You know, at the at you know when you come across the finish line, you're gonna drop some lap time. That's the goal. So, um, basically, that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to gain. You know, I'd like to gain. I don't know, at least three quarters of a second. Um, I mean, I like to be down in the lower 34s. That would be nice. You know, maybe mid 35, 30, mid 34s when it's a heavy fuel load. And, you know, so at least a half a second. So let's say just roughly around a half a second. That's what I would like to gain. But uh, we'll just have to see what how it goes. So, of course, if I don't have my own setup, then I start with the aggressive. Okay, so here's the aggressive. Um, and let's jump into this. And let's see, you got 25.7 and 26.7. So that's pretty, pretty. I want to make sure we'll go ahead and throw that into the other setup. So we're going to load this setup. 25.7 and 26.7. We'll just leave it like that for now. Okay, now this is um, the aggressive. No, that's not the aggressive. No, that's not the aggressive. That's my, ex ex that's not the aggressive. This is the aggressive. Yes. Okay, this is the aggressive. All right, here we go. Sorry about that. So we got 20. I was going to say, I didn't think it looked right. Okay, there we go. So now this is the aggressive setup. So I'm not going to change anything. We got the tires all where they need to be. Um, the cambers where it needs to be, where it says it is. Electronics is going to be, I'll leave alone. Fuel, I'm going to put up to 80 liters. Number one brake pad, because those things are common between all my setups. So that way you're not comparing apples to oranges. You're comparing apples to apples. Um, that, I'm going to turn that down to steering ratio because that's just, you know, used to me driving. But, you know, again, a lot of this is different. Lots of different stuff here. Completely different setup. Shocks, 
arrow, um, lots of differences. So I think the tires I had three and three, so I'll change the brake ducts too. And again, that's because of that. So let's change that. Um, let's just change it to number two. And let's go make some laps. And let's just see what it, let's. Green light, green light, go, go, go. Of course, I, you know, I ran the other setup my older setup, I ran and got the tires where I wanted to be and things like that and did some warm-ups so I could get myself up to speed here, Masano, back up to speed again and everything. And that's how I got up to, you know, got it down to a 34.95. But Make like three laps, four laps, enough to get the tires. Here, getting on the limiter. doing I mean I'm trying to as I'm doing this of course I don't really put a lot of weight in the first lap the first lap is not a throwaway because it still matters but it's not like it's also the be-all get-all either so but actually it feels really good for a first lap I think so if my initial impressions are it feels really good for a first lap and I think that's because it's when you got all this negative camber you get a lot of side grip something there. It's another thing I'm listening and, and feeling for when it's hitting something and it looks like it hits something. Which is a spot right there. has a little bit of the feeling that you know it doesn't turn and then it turns really fast it has that kind of feeling to it to me not really bad though like some other cars do so it's not real bad Slidey. Doesn't feel really bad though. Tires look good.
a lap time, though. One more lap, that'll be it. Yeah, just moved over a little bit to miss that bump. Bad though. Well, okay. step so, far. so it's a lower thirty five, and I might be able to get close to my time, maybe. I mean, I'll just try to change your driving a little bit, the way you drive. Um, but, you know, you look at it, I think I need to lower this back down maybe one. They're a little bit too, a little bit warm. But other than that, um, you yeah, know, you look at it, that's six degrees, six degrees, six degrees, and six degrees. So they're all, you know, these are equal as far as the temperature on the tires. So that's not bad either. Um, I like that. That's really nice. So again, this is not a really, it's not a bad setup, but this is where, you know, you go to find out how to, how to improve the car. You got to look at the car. There's no way you can see it all from just, obviously you can't feel it all because you can't, you're, you know, this is virtual. You're not in a real car. So, you know, you got to take advantage of that. And the advantages of that are looking outside the car. Um, and a lot of times, that's what I do to see the attitude of the car. So let's take a let's look at the last couple laps. One, you can see sparks or see if you're hitting stuff. That's one thing. But you can see the car hit something there. I'm looking for it leaning, and it see it does it is leaning some. Maybe in certain instances you might want it to move a little bit, but in a lot of other ones you don't want it to move really hardly at all. So that's when you got to decide. You also, I'm looking to see the back tires. Are they jumping up and down? Are they pogoing? And that that might tell me the car's got too much rebound in it. So again, if you see the car pogoing up and down like it's bouncing, not kind of bouncing, but it's just you know that tells me it's got too much rebound in it. Because you want the car to sit, you don't you don't mind it going up or down, but you don't want it to be pogoing. You want it to basically sit and squat and sit unless it hits a bump. Hundred fifty four, hundred fifty five. That's not real bad. That's about on par. I think the best I see is about one fifty six. So it's it's not that far off. See, it doesn't jump when it hits the bump. But here it looks like, through these slow turns, it does look like it's leaning a pretty good amount. It's 
It's not going over the bumps too bad. Especially like that one. Okay, so it doesn't look really bad, to be honest. You can see me having to correct the car a lot coming off the corner, and that's, you know, it's got the little bit of a little bit of power oversteer type thing going on. And, of course, that is a little bit of waste of time. And you can understand when the tires are cold, but they're not cold now, so they shouldn't, they should just be, you know, shouldn't have to be doing that. So, again, you know, it doesn't look really bad. Nothing major um, other than fighting the car a little bit coming off the corner. So now let's go back to the garage and let's load up the other one. So we're going to load up the old setup. And we're going to go off of that. Oh, go down there. So oh, let's see if it's on the right tire. No, let's get on the right tire. Put on number twos, put some fresh tires on it. Okay. Now we just did like four laps, so let's do four, you know, three or four laps and see if it feels any better than that, than the aggressive. It's tighter. Yeah, steering's a lot tighter, so that's, you know, definitely a, the feeling is different there. The uh, brake bias has got more towards the rear. So I can tell the back end's uh, a little bit more nervous. Feels better coming off the corner. These are all the things that I do when I'm doing a setup. You know, whether it's with mine or an aggressive.
I like a car that's got a little bit more brake, you know, the brake bias is a little bit more aggressive. And I don't want it to upset the rear end. So that's no good. But I also want it to help stop be able to, you know, have better braking distances. Aggressive's good, but sometimes it's not just the ultimate lap, it's what it does over the race stint. the idea. Tires don't look too bad. Still, it's, it's only another tenth or two from my fast lap with the aggressive. So, it don't feel bad, to be honest. So, where are we going to start to see, you know, to pick up what I'm looking for? I mean, I really would like to pick up a half a second. And this is where we get into the adjustments. So, let's look at you get five degrees there, five degrees there, five degrees there, and four degrees there. So again, it's a little bit tight on the on this part. Um, tires are pretty much tells you a lot what's going on. Same thing with this. Um, you can see it's it's really close here, but that's only been four laps. So that's going to get wider and wider, just like this is going to get wider and wider. So really, um, you know, we, we need to try to close that gap up. Um, a little bit, teeny bit better on the aggressive for the front. I mean, front to rear. It's just a little bit better. Almost the same, but just a little bit better on the one on the right side. So... I'm going to try to go make some adjustments and go over what they do. So that's going to be what I'm going to try to do. So that way, give you some scenarios of when to, when to use it. So let's start with the first here. So the tires were pretty close. I think they were pretty, pretty decent. Um, let's go up one on each side over here. It's just trying to keep them all four at the same temperature or same pressures 
um, and also things to try. Okay, one, I'm I'm tempted to try with this because the Aston Martin has have good turn in, so I would like to see, and that would also take some of the wear off the front. Um, is knock this down a little bit. Now, why would you want to do that? Well, again, if it's really cold outside, uh, or you know, you got really, really low temperatures, and you're struggling keeping the heat, yeah, you could put more toe in the car. Uh, negative toe, I should say, negative toe. If you're on a long straightaway, Paul Ricard, Monza, and a lot of tracks. I mean, there's a good amount. Barcelona, um, you know, you might, you know, of course, Mount Panorama. I mean, you might want to run a little bit less toe because, you know, obviously with straightaway speed and also tire wear on the front. But if you have, let's say you have a lot of wear on the rear, but, you, you, you know, the fronts aren't wearing as bad. Well, you might want to run more toe to try to wear the fronts even because you want them to wear even. You don't, you don't want, it's not like you're going to use them again. So it's not, I mean, you want to basically, you know, wear them out evenly as close as you can because in that way the car will change even it won't change oversteer understeer and all kinds of crazy stuff so but i mean i'm trying to find speed too so and of course we're going to change something else here in a second so let's start with with that camber wise okay camber wise i try to keep the pressures here around five degrees between inner and outer that's what i'm trying to keep it at all four corners um it's it's not a given it's not like it has to be that it's just a, a what I try to keep it at. Sometimes it might be four degrees. Sometimes it might be six degrees. Um, but I try to keep it right around five degrees, um, six at the absolute most. But you know, you know. But sometimes some certain tracks you might run that even when you're running a low camber. So again, I'm going to turn this down just one click, and that's it. Just to get a little bit more. Cause see, now I'm taking. Obviously, what I'm doing here, I'm taking some of the negative toe out of here. So, that's going to take maybe a little bit of turn-in out, some of the turn-in. So, now I'm adding it a teeny bit back in by taking some of the negative camber out. So, what's going to happen now, the, the less you have, basically, it's, it's going to be very reactive. As soon as you turn the wheel, it's going to be turning because the edge of the tire is going to be, you know, you're, most of the tires on the road or, you know, more and more of it's on the road as you take the negative camber out. So it's going to definitely turn in faster. So, I mean, obviously it was only a teeny bit of adjustment, so it wasn't that big, but still. Um, here with the caster, that's not that big of a deal. It's mainly for a lot of fast uh, sweepers type thing. It's not bad. I mean, I might take just a teeny bit out um, just for reaction and to get the car to react just a teeny bit quicker not a big deal though um toe now toe i noticed that the back of the car seems a little slidey a little unhappy so one thing that seems to be working that if you take some of this positive toe out it helps it so let's start with that and see if we need to change that um so i'm going to do that now the camber in the rear now this only had four degree four degrees and this had five, but let's let's go up a couple, three over here. So that might be too much. We might go too much, but let's just go up a, a few here, and that will basically get a little bit more um, side grip going through the middle of the corner and things like that. But I'm a big proponent of a tire on the ground. I don't like running a lot of negative camber. Because it basically just, it feels good mid-corner and things like that. But I like using mechanical grip to turn the car, not negative camber. To me, negative camber is not to turn the car. I mean, what's the sense of having a big tire if you're only using three quarters of it? Um, you know, on most of the track. And then you're only using the other full of it when you're in a full, you know, full turn. So basically, I still, you know, if you're, the car's not rolling over the edge of the tire, then I want to use all the tire that's on there. And that's, again, where you come in the race setup. And that's where you, you're, you, you know, I'm, I'm, my goal is to have 
good consistent laps and something to fight with at the end. At least that's the goal. Um, ABS, all this looks about normal. Fuel, of course, I got 80 liters. That's all normal. Mechanical. Now, to me, it seems the car... Now, remember we said in those corner, tight corners, it seemed like it was rolling a little bit. But to me, it actually has too much sway bar. Um, so we're going to take one out. Because it's it's not turning when I want it to turn. And then it's oversteering coming off the turn. So that tells me the front end is... is I need it to move when I want it to move. But I don't want it to move. I, it doesn't need to move. So it's not doing that. So basically in those slow corners, it's moving too much. So... Basically, we just take one out at least, at least one out, maybe two. I'll take two out, and we'll try it. The brake bias is fine. I'll leave that alone. Now, this is where again we're going to make a big difference. Again, I'm wanting to get change the balance of the car. So basically, with the anti roll bar here in the front, it's going to change the total balance of the car as far as what the front's doing. Again, you want it to move a little bit. But you don't want it to pitch to any one corner. So basically, um, I like to try this. And of course, a lot of times what I do is I'll try that. And if I don't like it, I can always go back. So again, you know, you're trying to find the happy balance between front and rear. Now here, of course, I got the bump stop range at zero. So and that's what I used to run a lot, just like this. The bump stop range is three. So it's a very, very little minimal movement as far as the sho the shocks and that's another reason why you're probably I'm probably getting some power oversteer coming off the corners because the your the suspension is not allowed to move. So basically we're going to adjust that. We're going to I'm going to move this. I want I want to try this. We're going to stiffen the springs. Instead of relying on the sway bar to keep the front end, we're going to stiffen the springs and of course that gives us a little bit more control also. And then on top of that I want to lower this and increase this, the bump stop range. Now, what is that doing? Now, what I'm doing in here is the springs, obviously, are what balances the front, and then the springs in the rear is for, for the rear. But what I don't want is I don't want the car bottoming out. I don't want the car pitching on a corner. And, of course, then you gotta, you're trying to run so much sway bar that that's not good either. So it's binding the car up. So bump stop rate. I mean, I want to run a bump stop rate, but let's see if this will work. I'd rather run the, the lightest I can, not the heaviest I can. So if I can get away with a 900, I'll run a 900. If it's not good enough, I'll go up. But I'd rather run the lightest bump stop rate I can. And that it makes it more compliant over the bumps. I mean, if you stiffen this up, let's say you run 1,000, 11, 12, whatever, it's going to make, you hit a bump, it's going to be like hitting a rock. So you want to, that's why I try to run it softer, or, or as much as I have to. Let's just put it that way. So if it goes over a bump or a sausage, it doesn't wreck the car. And of course, same thing with the bump stop range. If you have a bump stop range of zero, it's basically right up against it. So it's going to hit that bump stop rate instantly. So I want a little gap so the shot can do what it's supposed to do. And the, and the bump stop range... Um, basically still be able to, like under the severe loads, braking, braking, turning, those kinds of things, that's when it'll come into action. Um, so then we'll go down here, um, and we got 600 bumps up right here. I'm, and then this, the rear, I've learned, it, you know, certain places like Paul Ricard, you, you have to run it pretty tight on this side, on the left rear, because, it, you know, again, you're in such such high loads going to those double right handers and things like that, but Masano, not not as much. So I'm gonna increase it to like 20 and see what it does from there. And again, that gives the car more time to squat and get grip instead of just power over. If it if it stops and can't get grip when you're coming off a corner, it's gonna make a power oversteer because it's not gonna be able to. It's gonna unload. And then it's going to slide. So again, that's to get the car to get some grip at the rear tires coming off a corner. So that's what that is. 
Um, and of course, also when you go over a bump, again, you go over a sausage or anything else, now it's got a bigger gap, so it's not going to upset the rear and get the car where you're having to drive the car to try to keep up with it. Here, the, any sway, the, sway, bar, the sway bar in the rear, um, we have it at, that's what, a three. Well, I adjusted this down, and a lot of times these go hand in hand because that's that's basically the balance front to rear is will decide what the car's attitude is going to be. So a lot of times if I do adjust this, I will think about adjusting this because you're basically changing the front. Unless I was wanting to get the car to rotate from the rear more, I'd leave it alone. But I don't. So I'm going to knock this back just one. Okay. So I, I took this two. I'm going to knock this back one. The diff um, is at 60, which I'm going to knock that down one. Because I want it to come off the corners and not, again, that could be some of the power oversteer problem. It's locking up the diff too fast. So, I mean, we'll try it and see what it happens and see how it goes. So, again, there's there, again these are all rough. You know, you, a lot of times I'll go back and I'll go back the other way or click back this way and things like that. But this is the way you try it. Now, the shocks, again... Um, these aren't too bad. They look pretty good. And, of course, I stiffened up the front. So, um, you know, I'm not using MoTeC right now on everything. I'm still getting into it and still – but I'm not using it when a, on a setup that I am putting out there. But I will be here in the very near future. I'm just wanting to get used to it and see how it works. And so I am I, I am messing with it, and uh, I'm – kind of was hoping that once this update gets through that's coming up the end of this year and then i'll start implementing it um I, but i don't want to really get into that and then the update come out and then and then it's just chase you know you're chasing all kinds of changes so basically you know these i try to just get close and that's it and we'll go with this and again usually i'm usually pretty close um this looks pretty good. Usually I run a little bit more rebound. Um, I usually have a little more fast rebound on the front. I usually run a little more fast rebound on the front because it, you know, with the weight in the front and you're on the brakes and things like that, you need the, the front to react faster than the rear. The rear, I don't. I don't want it to pogo, and that's what I'm afraid of. I, don't, I do not want the rear end to pogo. And that's bouncing up and down and things like that, because then it's unloading and loading, and you're that's it makes you where you can lose the car, lose it, or you know under over a bump. So we'll leave that and just try that again. These are just changes off the cuff, pretty much, and then we'll try it, and then we can see what the tires are telling us, and go off of there. Now we got a 1.6 front arrow variation. So basically, we're gonna go. Down in the front one. So now we're up to two. Okay, but this is going to put a lot more grip on the front, and I'll have to be careful of certain things. We're going to have to see if it hits. I don't, it might hit stuff because it was already hitting. Well, it wasn't. It was hitting our, on the aggressive, and it was all the way down. It was down to 55. So I want to have 56 just to have a little bit more clearance. Um, the rear wing, let's try it at seven. So that puts it back down to 1.4. And that's 1.5. So basically, we're at 1.5, and we have uh, changed the total balance of it. Even though the front arrow variation is pretty close, but we have more grip in the rear and in the front. So it should be better all the way around. So again, let's try it. Again, I'm trying to communicate, you know, what each thing does. So if you all are in a certain certain, you know, and I'm going to go over some more stuff to basically why would I change that or why would I look at changing that or change that and then go off and change this. So because sometimes, you know, you change one thing and it leads where you have to change something else. That happens a lot. Good. 
crank for cold tires. Still like to stay off that limiter. show you some other things too the things that I look at when I'm doing setups so, uh, how the balance changes already. Yeah, I still don't like that. something there, I think. Well, tires are decent. Let's take a look at them. Still felt like it was too oversteery to me. See, that's six degrees. So that's six. That's six. That's five, and that's five. So these are where they need to be. These are still... A little bit too much. 
So again, I'll take some more negative camber out. These I'll leave alone. And that should get those close. Yeah, not too bad. It seems a little bit closer as far as the wear. Again, I want to increase the wear on the front and less on the rear. That's the goal anyway. So we're not doing too bad there. Um, kind of curious on the speed on the back stretch. So I'll probably take a look at that. So I don't. Let's just add a little bit more negative toe. We keep increasing the front wear. So let's do that. Um, I don't like the way it's uh, this needs to come down one, just because I, it still feels like it wants to o uh, understeer or uh, oversteer coming off the corners, especially. So I just and it, it sh should be plenty of wing. I shouldn't have to add any more wing, really. I don't. I don't think so. So it it's too much. So I, I need to, I want to get on the gas earlier and it not do that. Um, I'd rather leave the brake bias alone, but let's go up one on the anti sway bar and to keep the front end solid. So let's just go back one. We went down two, now we went back one, and that double that dog leg down the back straightaway that's where that really comes in handy because you want it you want the front end to stay where it needs to stay not not rotate on the one corner and then what it'll do if it does that it's going to want to loop especially if you're on the brakes and those things and i want to get a more brake bias i want to get more aggressive with this but I, i'm you know we could do that while we're going on the track um a little bit more shock for the bumps and compression for when you're under braking, especially the front end. I always, you know, the front end is usually the one I go off of more because you got the, especially this has got, a, you know, the engine's in the front or mid front. And then, of course, when you're on the brakes, the weight goes to the front. So you usually want a little bit more uh, shock on the front than you do on the rear. And the rear, I want it to squat when, you know, you're taking off, accelerating. I want it to, you know, give a little bit so it can get grip. So, um, other than that, everything looks pretty good. I'll have to adjust this too, as far as the brakes. The, the um, not the brakes, but the see if this limiter we can get this limiter not to come in. It's still pretty far off of what I want to be. So that's not good. Sometimes it, that's why I said this takes a long time sometimes, but I just, you know, I want to go over some of these adjustments that I do. Oh, I forgot to go over what it's going to do when we change. Let's do a, let's try to get a little bit longer run this time, and then we can go back over. I want to go over what it, the, how it changes, you know, the balance changes later in a stint. So... I don't mind when it's cold tires because they're still cold, so. I really would like to see it run more mid 34s. I mean, that would be really nice. Some of it also is feel, you know, preference and how you like it to feel.
might just be some of the diff. See, it's turning really good. Mostly for having that stiff a spring on it. It's turning really good. Feels good in the front. Feels good on the brakes. Just wish I didn't have that dang limiter. I'm going to cut it down and see if it'll help. See, I don't hear the back end slide no more, so that's good. hit that but I gotta be more inside. That was that was right but I gotta be cut it more. Look at that too. Would have been a 3470 something. there again. Better lap though. Relatively personal fastest lap. Good over the bumps. it in 
this corner here for some reason. That's better. Not bad. Still got 67 liters. Not bad. Let's take a look at the tires. Got five degrees there, five degrees there, five degrees there, and five degrees there. All the tires are really close as far as knock that down another tenth. It's just a little hot. Try to keep try to keep the tires at all the same pressures really close anyway. No graining, no nothing. And look at the wear. That's even better also. The wear is better. We got That's even right there. I mean, exactly even on the left side. So that's awesome. And on this side, it's off a couple. Nothing, Not real bad. Kind of wish it was a little bit better. And I did not adjust the bias at all. So that's a good thing. I mean, I could go, I would like to go down some more, but I would leave it there to keep the tires where they're at. And then if you need to, start dialing in the brake bias as need to. So, again, again, I think I like this. Let's look at the, let's look at, um, and of course, what, like I was going to go over, um, before I forget, we got the fuel load. Okay, so a lot of times, you see what we have with new tires. You got 69 right height in the rear and 56 in the front. So let's say we're at the end of a stint and you got 10 liters left. Well, now look at it. Now it's 57 and 71. So that, you know, come up one one more in the front and came up two in the rear. So, again, that's a pretty big difference as far as the right height. And that's the re another reason why I really try to keep it more on the conservative side. Because if I don't, it's going to raise up even more. And I, I always check this when all my setups to see how it's going to react when they're low when the fuel is low in case it's dramatically because i mean every car is a little bit different as far as how much it raises front to rear so i've always checked this just to see how it you know it goes because sometimes it might raise nothing in the front and all in the back or all in the front and nothing in the back or hardly any in the back so it just all depends on what car you're you know you're in so uh let's go out just for a quick little spin we'll put the other tires these same tires were on it. We'll just leave those on because that's what we had on there. And I'll leave. Let's see if you go up. That's still the same. See, so it stays the same. Now, now it goes down in the front. So it's going to run in the. It's going to go up in the rear first before it comes up in the front. So let's run it with 20 liters. Because I want to see what it feels like with this when it's like this. Um, so basically 20 liters and we'll make a few laps and see how it feels compared to, uh, you know, if the balance is really bad. You might have to lower this down one more notch in the back. So let's find out.
course, usually I have a little bit more wear on the tires when I'm checking it. So I, these tires are just trailer, basically just still pretty fresh, but I usually try to check them when they got a little bit more wear on them, see how they feel. It also gives you an idea, let's say you change tires, but you know, of course your fuel load is no different, so it gives you an idea on that also. Your tires are still coming up to temperature or so. Let's crank a little bit more brake in it. See what it feels like there. Just a shift. Feel too bad. Right on my Delta. So that's good. It shows that the, you know, your balance doesn't change dramatically. Up here, see what we got. A little too deep.
right on it. You know, and maybe there's somebody out there saying, why do you do that? Well, again, I'm doing it because I want to see what the balance is with the less fuel. Because if you, you have a pit stop and you change tires and things like that, you know, of course, I probably have more than 20 liters, but I also am just trying to get an idea of what it's going to do with lighter fuel. And obviously, this, the car sitting is going to be totally different. Ride height is going to be different. So, again, that's the whole idea. Um, well, maybe it didn't change it. Oh, I think you got to save it. That's what you got to do. Oh, heck, I was doing good then without it. I forgot to save it. I thought I did, but I didn't. Oh, well, let's go back. Oh, that's good, because the tires are worn even more. So let's go back. Oh, I forgot. You got to do that every time. I think. I didn't look to see if it had only 10 liters. I didn't look. Yeah, I think it did. I didn't think it had 10 liters. Well, let's try it again. Because that's good. The tires are worn even more. It shows it's consistent because we did how many laps in the same same times, mid 34s. But I, like I said, I thought I hit save, but I guess I didn't. I keep forgetting to do that. And it changes if you don't. Well, let's go back and. See if it changes now. But this is stuff I check because I want to make sure, like I said, I want to check the balance of the car with low fuel so these are things I all I do when I'm doing a setup revising a setup Breaks up, see if the back end gets nervous. better lap.
still feels okay. It's not like it's, you know, oversteery, understeery. Doesn't feel bad. Feels like it's sliding a little bit more, but it's even. Seventy-five, not bad. So again, I'm happy with that. Still got no graining. Still don't have any kind of mess up as far as the tires. You see, it's getting a little bit. You know, as it's growing as they're wearing. And of course, I'm turning up the brake bias to try to get the back end to be unhappy. But it seemed fine, so that's not an issue. It's wearing, you know, the, the rear more than the front. But that's why I would probably leave it at 61 for, you know, as long as I could until I needed to start dialing in some of the brake bias. But really, I think it's pretty good. Um, the only other thing you could do, maybe go down one more in the rear. Like that. Um, and that would give you a little bit more stability. So that would be something to try. Is to go down one more in the back. But everything else seems fine. Um, it's hard to really tell as far as uh, some of the tire stuff. We could go up one more here. Try that. Get a little bit more side grip going. Let's try that. See if we can do any better. I was thinking about doing something with this diff too, but I, I like leaving it. The lower you go with the diff, the more this is going to separate left to rear, or left to right, left to rear, left to right. And that's when you get the car doing crazy honky, doing nut, you know, nut things. Because the one side's wearing really bad, and the other side's not wearing real bad, and the, and that's when the car starts getting like super oversteery, or just slides out from under you. You know, you're going through the corner through a fast sweeper, and the car just loses it. And that's why I really like the rear tires to wear as close as I can, but that's definitely not possible. But I mean, these aren't too bad. These aren't really really bad. These are not too far apart, and that's why I like to leave it that way. The more you separate it. The more you knock this down, it usually it usually goes more, you know, because the two tires aren't driving. You got one driving a lot more, so that usually whichever t you know t tire wears the most, it's going to just make that even worse and worse and worse. So it's just going to be pretty much feeding on itself. So then you get to the end of the you know the end of the 30 minutes and the tire is totally shot on the one corner. And the other corner is not real bad. And that's when you get the car, you can't even control it. So that's why I hate doing that. All right. Again, I take as much dip as I have to coming out. So you can go too, you know, you got the one tire spinning all the time. Or you got too much diff. Then a lot of times what happens is mid-corner, it will want to push mid-corner. That's when you got way too much diff. Is you're about mid-corner and the car is just understeering. So, you know, you might go in right and it might come off the corner great but mid corner it doesn't do good because that's because the diff is locking up through the middle of the corner so again that's the different things that happens with that um so let's go over a few laps that's not what i wanted Still got the same tires on it. I still got the same tires on it. Okay, now it does. Now, now it switched. Okay. I'll make sure it's got a new set of tires.
not too bad on cold tires. So that's one thing I do like. Because, I mean, you obviously you got to have, the, you know, green flag, you got to go. So the car's undrivable when it's cold tires. You can lose a lot of positions. Oh, that felt pretty good. Especially for cold tires. forward bite. I knew that was going to be an hour. <laughs> See how much I could cut it. That's okay. The tires aren't up to temperature yet anyway. I like it. Looks like it's got more forward bite. Lowering it down one notch. But the problem with that is what that's gonna cause is some of these corners it might not be able to finish. So that's what I gotta see. Like right here. Or right here. Too bad. Right here, you know, any of these corners like this, first it's fast one. wider there. Let's see if we can do a better lap. that up. I should have gone better. And I did it again. Break to it. See how it reacts. Of course, it, once I go over all this stuff, I feel, pretty much feel like it's pretty much there. That's when I do my hot stand. And a lot of times, you know. I make another couple, at least, you know, small changes there for something I don't like.
Thought I had a good lap going until that. I can tell it's not turning as sharp through the corners as it was. So it's hurting in some places, in other places it's better. So, so again, it's, so you got to decide which you like more. One more. I guess too early. Ah, I'm out of position. I wasn't in the right place. All right, well, let's go to the pits. Or you can practice going to pits too. I need to practice more of that really. <laughs> Try to get my pit times down. So again, you're still at six degrees, uh, six degrees difference there, five here, five here, and five there. So see, this is six right now. So um, the temperature is coming up. Look at it. Look how hot. It's a lot hotter than what it usually is. Now it's 26, where I'm usually, you know, 24. So again, it's getting a little warmer. So I hate messing with the tires because it's just going to throw them way off for doing, um, you know, when it's cool or cooler. So, again, let's see what the wearing it, what the wear is. Eh, it's not too bad. Again, I had the, the back end dialed up trying to see if it would make a difference. Rear end still wearing a little bit more. And I had it at 68, of course. So, again, you can have it at 68 or 69 and decide what you like best. Um, I kind of like 68 better just because the point being is once you... Let's go back up to 10. See, now it's only at 70 and 57, or before it was 71 and 57. And as you see, the rear tires 
are going to wear faster. So that means just what's going to happen is you're probably going to start the back end's going to start getting loose. So it'd be better coming off the corners probably to have it a 68. That's what I would probably go with. Um, you know, qualifying you could probably go down. You could probably go up to 69 or 70 and qualifying and go. Um, but to me, a seven wing is enough. You could probably run more wing, but I mean, let, we're going to look at the speed down the straightaway, see what the difference is. But right now, I like it. And we're going to go over it one more time, but after this replay. So we did 29 laps. So again, this for this is in the beginning here. This was the uh, aggressive. And this was my setup. So let's. I think this might have been my setup here too. So let's go over and see what the speed was. I think it was 155. Barely. It was 154 there. So I think it was 155 one time. Let's check here. No, 154. So about 150 again, that's about one or two mile an hour off. But I mean, that's still there. It's still close. As far as the, and that's to the fastest guys. So let's see what it is on our quick run. Lap 19. Oh, look at that. Almost 156. Wow. Okay. And 155 to 156 there. Oh, that's because I had low fuel. That's when I was doing my low fuel run. So that's good. Well, let's pick another one that's got more. Uh, I think I did a 55 here. That's yeah. That's, let's look at let's look at that one. That's got that's more comparison. So let's just look at that one lap, and that's it. We'll look at this one lap, all the whole lap, and see how it is. Because this is when it had a regular normal fuel load, and almost the exact same time, uh, 34.55. So you know, hopefully, you know, if it was cool and or cooler, and you had uh, you know lower fuel, I could be running right on the cusp of 33s. comment or feedback would be great i mean anything y'all would like to see or anything you're uh, interested in Fifty-four, one fifty-five. 155 so it's about the same so there's no no loss of uh speed actually like i said it gained it when i had less fuel i think it's better over the bumps you know, it's, I think it's better over the bumps than it was on the old setup. Because if you look, um, 
Let's see. Well, these are all 3480s here. But if you look here, especially this beginning part, you know, when you go over the bumps, it goes over them like it's nothing. So you can get pretty aggressive if you want to. So I'm pretty, I'm happy about that. It's like the bump here and these bumps going through that real tight uh, section. Especially when you cut right through here, right there. I mean, it's really good. Doesn't upset the car at all. And this is things that I'm looking. I'm looking at how, how you know how much am I turning the wheel? Is the wheel going back and forth? Am I fighting it? You know, trying to get grip or you know trying to get control? I mean, I'm looking, you know, again, you know, you always hear me looking for sparks. You know, I mean, the, you know, the thing I like I said, you know, I'm, I'm cranking the wheel over, but the car's not turning that good. I mean, it, you know, there's a lot of things I look at and look for and do a you know because that's the advantage of being virtual. I mean, you can really get any view. You can get all kinds of different angles to see what the car is doing on any one corner. So, I mean, you know, take advantage of it. So if I have a question, that's a lot of times that's what I do. So let's go over the setup. It looks pretty good to me. Um, again, I wish, I mean, I always want a little bit more, a few more tents. Um, but I think it's, you know, it's definitely a good half a second improvement over what I had. Um, so, and of course, that's with more fuel or a, well, no, about the same amount of fuel. Yeah, same amount of fuel. So let's go over to setup. Of course, I'll put a link to this in the description because I think it'll be all right. I think it'll be a good setup. Aston Martin's pretty balanced all the way through, and we did a few tests. But we got, of course, 25.7 left side and 26.6 right front and 26.4 right rear. And again, the toe, we're going to go through this a little bit slower because I want to make sure, you know, we go through all this stuff. Uh, toes negative 0 0.08 and again you want to do that adjust it either way for whether your tires are getting too hot in the front um, they're sliding you see them turning yellow and they're getting too warm even sometimes they're in, they're not as hot but they're turning yellow that's because they're sliding too much you got too much negative toe or whatever um, if you basically you know of course in the rain you usually run a lot more negative toe and that's to keep heat in the tire so again, you know, if you have a tighter track, you can run a little bit more negative toe. But the longer the track, usually the less you want to run, and that's to, for your, uh, you know, top speed also to help you with a little bit with the speed. Camber negative 3.2 on the front, and again, I, I'm a big, you know, proponent of less negative camber just because I want the tire on the road for braking, um, everything, you know, turning as long as it's not basically going over the edge of the tire rolling over the tire i uh, to me i want more tire on the ground i just like to feel it gives you more uh, secure feeling and it doesn't it seems like the when you're turning the car through the middle of the corner it is more linear it's not falling off like a razor where you feel like a lot of times to me when you have a lot of negative camber you're turning and it doesn't turn and then all of a sudden it turns a whole bunch i don't i don't like it just it's too it's too light switch. I, I like it linear. And to me, and of course braking and, and or accelerating with the rear tires, I want the tire on the ground, not three quarters of it on the ground. So that's the advantages of that. Um, again, you know, of course, I always keep the tires, the temperatures, like I said, right around five degrees. I used to keep them at seven. And that's why I ran a lot more negative camber, but I don't I don't like that, and I, I keep it now around four or five degrees. Um, five's a good. Sometimes even if it's four, it's all right if it feels that good that way, and it has some really good turn in. I might even leave it at four. It's not the end of the world, so um, I'll do that. On the rear, the toe is 0 .05, and again, that's mainly the again the same thing with speed down the straightaway, but also it seems to me for whatever reason it seems to help with some of that sliding that goes on through the corners with acc every i used to carry always had it at 0.1 or more on the 
toe on the rear, but it seems now that if you run it less, you know, I'll run it sometimes negative, or not negative, I'll run it 0 .04, 0 .05, 06. If I'm trying to put a little bit more heat in the tire or, or wear as far to the front, you know, trying to put, you know, same thing as the front, trying to put, you know, I'll, I'll increase it a little bit more, but I always try to keep it around that. It seems to work almost all the time, so that's something I would just go off of. Camber negative 2.8, like I talked about, and the front, and the front, same as the rear. I want it for braking and for accelerating. I want the tire on the ground. Electronics are two, four, and two. And of course, um, you know ABS. I usually keep it three, four, five. And of course, traction control is usually usually at two or three. Other than the AMG, which I keep it a lot of times at four. Um, but again, you know, all that changes when it's wet. All these change. <laughs> Fuel, 80 liters, and of course, number one brake pad. Of course, the number two brake pad is for more endurance because you can go longer on these brake pads. I think you can go like 12 hours at least, I think. Um, and you can have a little bit of rain involved. So if it's a little wet, it's not the end of the world. So you can that's not bad. And then, of course, the three are the, are the full wets. That's the full Monty. You know, they're full wets. So I usually go with the ones. The fours are just what you use to basically see what a worn out brake pads feel like. That's all they're for. You can put them on and you go out and you can go do a few laps and it's supposed to simulate what the brakes are when they're shot. You'll get what they feel like, which I've, I've felt them before. I'm pretty sure I know it starts, basically feels like it's, uh, you got a flat spot on the tire or something. That's what it usually feels like. But um, anyway, that's, that's the brake pads. I use number ones almost all the time because all my races are worth an hour or less. Mechanical, six in any roll bar, 61 on the brake bias. Steering ratio is turned all the way down. And I always set my any roll bar up to, you know, basically you're trying to keep the front tires wearing even this way and that way. So obviously it's kind of hard because you got, you know, some corners that are way more left hand or right hand. But, you know, you're trying to keep the tires wearing the same as far as uh, the left side and the right side. And also keeping it from wearing too extreme as far as, that's another thing, you know, you, you get a lot of rolling, you'll get a lot of diff difference in temperature on the tire itself because the tire's rolling. And that'll keep it from doing that. So, again, that's another thing. Uh, of course, the brake bias is 61. I try to find a happy medium, and if I find it where it really works good, a lot of times I might go up one point, just because I'm, what I'm wanting to do is when the tires are fresh, you can you know get away with a lot more, but then what I want to do is help change this. I can use the brake bias to help the back end brakes come in a little harder, and what that does is it helps rotate the car. And so like, let's say you start to understeer because your tires are wearing a little bit, and you're not braking as good because your tires are wearing a little bit. Well, you you go from, you know, 61 down to 60, and now all of a sudden your brakes, you're using more rear brake. It starts grabbing a little more, and it starts rotating the car. You know, if you're trail braking going into the corner, it'll rotate it a lot more. So it can make a big difference. So, again, um, I always try to do that on my setups if I can because it just gives you another point of adjustability. Um, springs in the front are 165,000 and the bump stop rate is 900 and the bump stop range is five. And of course I try to go with the spring that feels the best. So in react, of course, time wise also, but also it, the stiffer the spring, most of the time you'll have more wear. So let's say this, the rear tires right now are wearing faster than these, right? That's what it was. So, I can't do anything here to make these wear less. So, I need to increase the wear more on this to get this to be equal. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the spring rate up here. And that will give me a teeny bit more wear on the front. And then on top of it, I'll run a little bit more negative toe. That will give me just maybe a little bit more wear. And then pretty soon, you're, you're, you're as close as you can get. And that's what you want you want the tires as close as you can get wearing so at the end of a stint they're not some crazy difference and then that's when the car is acting all kinds of craziness of course the bump stop rate and bump stop range um, is basically just a bushing that's inside the shock 
that is, you know, different consistency and different thicknesses and things like that. That's what the range and rate is. And basically, I have it on my car. I have a bump stop, pretty aggressive bump stops on my Corvette. And it, it changes the way the car reacts. The shorter the bump stop, so if you got like zero to five, it's going to make, you know, you know, the less you have, it's going to make the car react really fast. Because it's not that you're going to limit the movement. The car is not going to move any direction very little. So, but the negative of that is when you go over bumps, it can upset the car. If you have a really bad bump, a sausage, a whatever curb, it can upset the car dramatically to where it slows it down or um, you wreck. So again, you know, it's good for like on the brakes because it helps you your rate as far as keeping your front end from your splitter from smacking the ground or whatever keeps your keeps it all good but you don't you know again you want to have that balance to where you can still go over a bump but it does what it needs to do in the places it needs to do it in so um those are again balances that you need to find that i like that you know i go with as least as i can i don't want to overdo it so that's why i went with that of course the springs on the rear are 155,000. With a bump stop rate of 600 and a bump stop range of 20. And why it's usually less is because the rear, obviously the front, is usually pitching on the front when you're on the brakes. You know, you're on the brakes, or you're going into a turn, it usually loads up the front. And that's why you have a stiffer spring a lot of times on the front also. Not all the time, but sometimes. And then on the rear, of course, you have more because you're wanting, you're getting on the gas, you're wanting the car to move a little bit to get grip and not have some kind of movement or obviously you're getting drive off the tires when it hits a bump you don't want it to completely jump sideways because it's not soaking up the bump and following the bump because the bump range is bump stop range is so tight so but in other instances let's say paul ricard where you're going into that double right hander and all this weight is on the left hand side you know, you want it tighter because you don't, that you're so much pushing over there that you want it to stay tight so it stays flatter going through there. And you have to, you have to do that so it keeps the, from the left rear pitching down. And some cars you have to do more. Let's say the BMW. The BMW, you got to usually run a little bit tighter because the car just flexes more. It flexes more. The back end's kind of pitching on its corners and things. So you got to run a little bit tighter bump stop range. So the car stays a little flatter. So again, every car is particular to what it needs. It's not one size fits all. It's it's you know it's a variation of it on every single car. So that's why I do those things. Any roll bars two preload is fifty, and of course, you know this is a good way, especially the tight corners, to get the car to to rotate. Is the any roll bar in the back? Um, I. Try not to lean on it too hard. I, I do want some because I want it to rotate. But if you get on it too much, it'll just the, the back end will just slide. And so I don't like that. So that's no good, especially after the tires are worn. So again, you want, you know, you got to have some anti-roll bar, but you don't want to go, you know, usually too crazy with it. Um, and the preload on the diff. I mean, the preload on the diff, obviously, you know, every car, again, is different. And you want to have... Uh, you want to be coming off the corner, and especially when you have corners that you're going left and right, or a lot of like Suzuka, which is a lot of S's, or you have, um, you know, here where you're going in that tight area where you're going, you know, right and then right and then right left, and then you're going left right away again, and all those kinds of things. I mean, you want the diff to stay open because you're needing the car to turn. If it locks up, it's it's going to cause nothing but problems. It's going to slide. It's going to understeer. It's going to do all kinds of crazy stuff. So again, um, you want it, you got to do that to whatever fits a balance of the track, but you don't want to be going through a corner and just one tire is wearing or one tire is digging and the other tire is not doing anything. And you come, you know, you're going through a corner. You want both tires to be to be driving. So it's all a balance of getting that to match up correctly. Shocks are 18, 14, 24, and 25 on the front. And 16, 13, 20, and 18 on the rear. And again, again, I'm you know I am using some Motec, but I'm doing it on my own. I'm not implementing it yet because I want to make sure that I'm using it correctly and I'm doing a good job with it. Um, 
And I'm also trying to figure waiting also to see if something changes with the update that's coming out here at the end of this year. And uh, that way I can kind of all implement it at the same time. And also I don't know how many updates are going to have to where the handling is going to change or I don't know what's going to happen with that. So I'm just trying to kind of waiting and then I'll implement that because MoTeC will be coming here in the future. Um, but again, usually I'm pretty close on my shocks. It's not like they're way, way off most of the time. Um, I usually go off of, again, just how it, how it feels, how it looks, and things like that. I'm not saying it's perfect, but usually they're usually they're pretty close. Um, you know, if I'm getting a lot of travel, too much, you know, too much travel, um, you know, what, how the steering wheel feels, you know, if it feels like it's winding up, things like that. Um, so, again, those are just, you know, goods or bads. i got goods and bads about everything, but... I just wanted to let you know what was happening and what was coming. Of course, on the rear, I, I don't know if I said it, it was 16, 13, 20, and 18 on the rear shocks. Of course, Arrow got 56 in the front, 68 in the rear with a 7 rear wing and a 3 and a 3 and the brake ducts. And the front arrow variation is a 1.3 to the positive. Now, again, with these, this is probably one of the most important pages. Um, let me back out of this for a second. This, this there we go. I'm sorry about this thing. Always, I probably need to change that in my settings. The TV keeps darkening down for some reason. Um, we got, like I said, we got the 56 in the front, 68 in the rear. Um, this is the most probably highlighted because this is changing the balance, the big and pretty much in the most way. Um, in the front, I'm trying to not hit things but if it's a, if i do touch a few little things i'll let it slide because i'm a front end person i like to feel the front end of the car i don't like it feeling vague when i turn i want it to turn and i like to feel what the front end's doing um i feel like to feel it load up and the higher you put the front the less chance you have at doing that um because what happens is you just get in the, the you know it's just physics i mean basically you're just getting the weight higher and higher and so it's harder and harder and as far as getting the front to turn so basically i want the front as low as i can but not low enough to where it's hitting so again that you know i don't want it hitting every single thing now if i have to maybe be really careful this one spot okay if it's worth it so again it's a judgment call but one thing i'll you know again i do that because when you start getting lower on fuel it's going to come up it, the ride height's going to come up. So, again, that's one reason I like to do that. And that's important. Same with the rear. Um, again, you got to watch because, you know, you get sparks and you, you hit the back of the car, it unloads, and then you wreck. So, I'm always wa these are the things I'm watching. But also, you know, the front, the lower you go, the more it's going to rotate. It, the front's going to want to turn. The higher you go, the more you. it's not going to turn that way. It's not going to rotate. And the same thing with the back. The back is basically the opposite when you raise the ride height in the rear it's putting weight to the front and that's why it changes the front arrow variation and it's going to make the car rotate it's going to make the car turn faster uh react quicker and turn, put more weight up on the front now again if you're trying to get a little bit more tire wear on the front that's another way of again a small way of putting a little bit more you put more weight towards the front it's going to put the weight on the nose and it's going to make the tires wear a little bit. So again, let's say, you know, you've done the toe and you've done the um, springs and things like that, but and you're still trying to get as close as you can. Well, you might go up one more click on the right height in the rear, which will help you turn. It will help the car turn and it will help get a little bit more wear on the front because you're putting more weight up on the front end. So that's, again, you know, little bit here and a little bit there and a little bit here it's like it's it's just like the track all these little bits add up so again that's how i do it um and you know sometimes it works you know sometimes i'm too aggressive trying to keep the wear even and then when i do a hot stand i gotta go back and go well wait a minute uh, i gotta go back one down one or two or whatever and then it's perfect just like i did with the amg when I was at Mount Panorama, Mount Panorama, if you saw that video, I actually ran some really good times. But 15 minutes through, it got it come around on me because the tires were wearing, the car was getting looser, and it was, it you know basically lost it. 
So I had to lower the back down two, and it was perfect for the 30 minutes. So again, those are things you you know things you just got to check and change. I think this one will be all right because I don't have it that high anyway. So I'm pretty sure it's, it'll be fine. That's why I, another reason I just stick with the 68 instead of the 69, just to give it a little bit more um, uh, cush there. So again, the rear wing also, the rear wing is just, you know, everybody knows what it does. But, it, you know, the more wing you put in, the more understeer, the more rear end is going to hook up. But the more understeer you're usually going to have. The front. Again, that's the balance of the car. If you usually put more wing in it, if you want to get the ride height, the front arrow variation up, you got to raise the ride height in the rear or you got to lower the front. You're going to have to do that to get it to even back out. So, again, those are all balances of the car front to rear. So, again, I mean, I sure hope I communicated at least some of this good. Um, I know it's a longer video, but I was just, again, trying to give you all some basics to where you all can – do things on your, you know, on your own if you're in a and want to change a little of this or that for track conditions. Track conditions are always changing, and that's one of the, to me, one of the real hard things with ACC because track conditions aren't the same. Tires, you know, the temps aren't the same. Green track, fast track, optimum track, and, and there's so many variations. So again, it's good to know this because again, that's why I always have a setup, and that's what my base setup is under the, those track temperatures, and then if, when I go to a uh, multiplayer, a CP race, then I use the I just use the EXP 1, 2, whatever, and I can change it however I want, and I don't lose my base setup. It's still the same. It hasn't changed. And that's why and I just go off of my mid-20s, low wind, and those kinds of things. And that way it stays. It's my tire temperatures, the, you know, pressures are the same, and the balance of the car is the same. And then if I need to change it during that race, I do that. But, again, I sure hope it helps. And um, any questions or feedback, I'll be glad to help as much as I can. And I sure hope you enjoyed the video. Give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't subscribed. And um, I sure uh, hope you come back and visit again really soon. Y'all take care. See ya.